This video will review the calculation of the critical path for a project. The problem is problem 314 on page 92 of the textbook. Here we have a carpet installation project with several different activities. There are three times provided for the activities. A, which is the optimistic time, M, which is the most likely time, and B, which is the pessimistic completion time. We already have a project network diagram created for this project. When three activity times are provided, the first step is to calculate the mean completion time for each activity. This is equal to the optimistic time plus four times the most likely plus the pessimistic time. This quantity is all placed in parentheses and then divided by six. By clicking in the box at the bottom of this cell, we can copy this formula down to the other activities. Finding the critical path involves calculating the earliest start time, earliest finish time, latest start time, latest finish time, and slack time for each activity. There are six rules that govern the calculation of these times. The first rule is that the earliest start time for all activities with no predecessors is equal to zero. There are three activities with no predecessors in this project. The second rule is that the earliest finish time is equal to the earliest start time plus the mean activity time. This earliest finish time will be calculated the same way for all the activities. So this formula can be copied down throughout the remainder of the spreadsheet. All of the times won't be correct until the earliest start times are filled in, but we can go ahead and set up the formula. Now we need to make the forward pass through the network. Logically, if activity D has C as a predecessor, the earliest that D can start would be the latest that C can finish. We set this relationship up with a cell reference in Excel. Activity E has two predecessors. If we look at the project network diagram, activities B and D must be completed before E can begin. Activity B has an early finish of 3.67. Activity D has an early finish of 9. Since activity E cannot begin until both of those are completed, it makes sense that the early start time would be the largest of the two. While we can see that this is 9, we go ahead and set up the formula so that the model will be flexible. So the third rule is that the early start is equal to the maximum early finish for all predecessors. We apply the same rule to activities F and G. They both have the maximum early finish of A and E as the early start time.
the predecessor of activity H is F, so the early start for H is equal to the early finish for F. This is just a simple case of rule number three. The early start for I is the early finish for G. The early start for J is the early finish for C. So we have to reference a cell that is several rows up in our worksheet in some cases. The early start for K is the maximum of the early finish times for I and H. We can see now that our estimate of the project completion time is 36.33. This completes the forward pass through the network. We'll now make the backwards pass through the network and start with the latest finish time. Latest finish is, we interpret as, the latest a project, an activity can finish and still complete the entire project in 36.33. In our project network diagram, there are two activities that have no successors. These are the completion activities, J and K. For those activities, the late finish time is equal to the maximum of all the early finish times. We use the max function because this makes the model flexible. The early finish time may or may not always be the last one in the list. Again, the max early finish time could be anywhere in the list, potentially. So our best bet is to use the max function. This is the fourth rule for the critical path method. The late finish for all activities with no successors is the maximum early finish time. The latest start time for each activity is the latest finish time minus the mean activity time. This formula will be the same for each activity, so we can set the formula up in the second row, and then copy it down to the other rows. Except for the last two rows, the value will not be correct until we fill in the latest finish times. So the fifth rule is that the late start time is equal to the latest finish time minus the mean activity time. The latest finish times for other activities are best obtained by looking at the project network diagram. If we look at activity I, activity I has one successor, and that's K. K must begin at day 29 for the project to be on time. Because K cannot begin until I completes, the late finish time for I must be the late start time for K. And now the late start time for I is correct. Activity H also has one successor. Its one successor is also K. So the late finish for H is equal to the late start for K. Activity G has one successor, which is I. The late finish for G is equal to the late start for I. Activity F has one successor, activity H. The late finish for F is equal to the late start for H.
Activity E is different. It has two successors, F and G. The latest these two activities can start and still have the project complete in 36.33 days are 13 and 15.83 respectively. Because E has to finish for both F and G to start, E will have to finish by the smaller of these two late start times to keep the project on schedule. This is the sixth rule for calculating the critical path. The late finish is equal to the minimum late start time for all successors. Activity D has just one successor, that's E. The late finish for D is the late start for E. Activity C has, one, has two successors, rather, D and J. So its late finish will be the minimum of the late starts for D and J. Activity B has one successor, that's E. And Activity A has two successors, F and G. The late finish for A will be the minimum of the late start times for F. In one instance, Excel seems to have reformatted the number in scientific notation, but if we change that, we can see that the late start time for C is really just zero. The slack time, then, is the late finish time minus the early finish time for each activity. The critical activities are those that have zero slack. So we can mark with a one the critical activities in column L of the worksheet. The critical path is C, D, E, F, H, K. This completes the calculation of the critical path for this example problem.